This is day 21 of reading Revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of life-giving water, sparkling like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of its street. On either side of the river grew the tree of life that produces fruit twelve times a year, once each month. The leaves of the trees serve as medicine for the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will look upon his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more, nor will they need light from lamp or sun, for the Lord God shall give them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of prophetic spirits, sent his angel to show his servants what, what must happen soon. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the prophetic message of this book. It is I, John, who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, Don't. I am a fellow servant of yours and of your brothers, the prophets, and of those who keep the message of this book. Worship God. Then he said to me, Do not seal up the prophetic words of this book, for the appointed time is near. Let, let the wicked still act wickedly, and the filthy still be filthy. The righteous must still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. I bring with me the recompense I will give to each according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are they who wash their robes so as to have the right to the tree of life and enter the city through its gates. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the unchaste, the murderers, the idol worshippers, and all who love and practice deceit. I, Jesus, sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let the hearer say, Come. Let the one who thirsts come forward, and the one who wants it receive the gift of life-giving water. I warn everyone who hears the prophetic words in this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words in this prophetic book, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city described in this book. The one who gives this testimony says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with us all. And so today we come to the epilogue of the book of Revelation. We end pretty much where we began with authority. The writer is very concerned that we should know that this message is authentic, that Jesus is at the center of it. And so that we, we return kind of to where we began with the writer receiving authority for what he has written, being told to ensure that it is read and it is heeded, uh, and that in fact everyone should know that this message has come in the form of divine revelation. Jesus is plainly at the center of this, and that is really important if we are going to tie this back to the gospel and to the broader Christian message and not make of it simply a kind of bizarre piece of Christian fan fiction. You'll note that there are several mentions in this last little section of prophecy. Overall, the book has been about apocalyptic, for the most part. It has been about what the writer understands to be the future plans of God, how everything that is wrong in the present will be righted in the future. But it also, as I mentioned close to the beginning, there is an element of prophecy in it. That is, it's meant to guide our choices now. When we look at those figures in the story that are painted very negatively, we can imagine some of their personality traits, some of their worldly habits, some of what makes them both world successful in a worldly way, but also unattractive in a spiritual way. And we are meant to be avoiding those things. So we should take away from it something about the way that we organize our lives now, 
something about where we place value in our lives now, how it is that we imagine ourselves to be part of the organizers of God's household in the here and now. I think it's really important to see that there is healing at the end. There have been some very dark images through the chapters that we have read in the middle of the book. And so the idea that everything ends with the perfected city of God, with the water which flows and the leaves of the tree which are for the healing of the nations, I think all this puts all of that in context, that throughout all of this, God's desire, God's intent has never been for destruction or ultimate death, but rather has in the end been for the purpose of healing. The, what God desires is that everyone should turn and live, as it says elsewhere in the gospel, and that our purpose is to see healing in these things that peel away from us those layers of worldly dirt and muck and imperfection that conceal within themselves the, the, the true image of, of, of Christ, which is meant to be each one of us. There's also at the end a message of invitation. A variety of parties are saying, come. It, it's not like any of this is closed or limited. The writer is told not to seal up what he has written. Rather, everyone is saying, come to this. Be part of it. Enter into the, the, the beauty and the transformation that God has laid out in these visions. And so, I think this brings us to the third and final message of what Apocalypse is about. We should see in it an authentic encounter with Jesus. God's call, once again, as is so common through all the rest of the story of God's relationship with humanity, for a genuine relationship with each one of us and with people in general. This is what God desires. This is what God is, is constantly calling us back to. And so with that, we, may we be blessed for having read and heard and meditated on these images. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus be with us. <laughs> Oh, yeah.